So now I'm going to turn the appliance gas off. And I hope by doing that I shall hear the appliance reigniting. Appliance is shut off. The gas is back on now and the fault code has came up with no flame. So the appliance has functioned correctly. So now I'll put it into reset. And the appliance is fired back up. The pressure is extremely good. The pressure should be at one bar when cold. The pressure functions by the use of an expansion vessel, and I've got one just here. So this is an expansion vessel used for a central heating system. Um, you can tell it's used for a central heating system because the neoprene washer is made and joined and sealed using this manufacturing line here. If this was for potable water, it would be a round one and it would be clamped on at the bottom using nuts and it would have a bag formation inside, still made of neoprene. So on the back, I'm just going to explain to you how it works. You have a neoprene washer, when cold, will be low. As water expands, the washer and the diaphragm will expand too and just allow and absorbing some of the pressure. So the diaphragm will maybe move and increase and absorb some of the pressure. Like so. So that could be when it's cold, that could be when it's hot. In here we have a pre-charge. You can test that by using a foot pump. So the expansion vessel has a pre-charge pressure in. This should be every for every floor in a property that's above the, the vessel should be um, have a conversation of 0.5 bar. Okay, that is what the manufacturers install in them, uh, half a bar. So sometimes what you, what you can find is that the valve can leave. If that's the case, you can put an extension piece on to seal it. And for maintenance purposes. So if this pressure is quite low, you could simply put the pump on, check the reading, and then pump it up. You would only do that should there be an issue, like the pressure relief's dripping or it's increasing in pressure on the gauge quite rapidly. When you repressurize these, it's always make, always make sure that the diaphragm is low with no pressure either side. So you'd have to drain the heating system down and maybe uh, open up an end on the heating system just to let the pressure of the diaphragm be moved down. Okay, so there's a few more test, tests you can do on this appliance. Um, you can do a gas rating, which is where you go to the meter and you measure how much gas is being burned over a period of two minutes. The other thing that's vital is that you put your U gauge, your, mono, your manometer, on the gas valve. You put it on the inlet for the gas valve. You put an appliance on, maybe three hot rings, you put the appliance on and you measure the gas 
supply on the inlet of the gas valve, so we've got a supply pressure, it should be 20 millibar. Three hot plates, appliance on, U gauge at the intake of the appliance gas valve. Um, most modern condensing boilers, the gas valves are really just safety devices. They don't open and close to a certain level, they just open up to let the gas through. Not like some of these old appliances, they open up to give you the correct burner pressure. Modern boilers, gas valves are the safety device. They open up and they close. So you have to have the correct supply pressure. 20 millibar, three hot plates on, and the appliance on. Well, I'm just going to tidy up now. Um, going to clean all the appliances down. Hoover up, put the dust sheets away. I'm going to explain to the client the work we've done. I'm going to make sure the customer understands how the appliance works. So he has a good understanding of getting the appliance really efficient. I'll make sure he's got thermostatic valves installed. Now talking about the Part L regulations. And I'll uh, give as much information as I possibly can. Whenever you display information, it always promotes public trust and your reputation. So I hope you enjoyed that little display and thank you for your time.